Hello there, what's going on? It's Doug Cunnington here, and I'm gonna show you how to create a custom report in Google Analytics. I was chatting with a friend earlier today, and she was upgrading some content similar to some things that I have been doing. I've been adding a lot of content to sites, like at scale, and I've been improving existing content, and obviously, it's very good to track your results. You don't wanna just keep doing something and have no clue if it's working. So I'm gonna show you how to create a custom report so you can track new content that you just published or you could track content that you are upgrading. So this is uh, this video is for a specific, very good friend of mine. So I hope this helps and let's get to the report. We're on Google Analytics. This is just my sort of landing page dashboard, which is it's actually the default. So what you do is you click Customize, you click on Custom Reports, and then you'll click on New Custom Report. You will name it accordingly. You need to put in what metrics you want to track. So that is kind of up to you, you know, whatever you wanna do. Um, I'm going to do page views here. Then I'm going to do sessions, if I can spell it. We have some commonly used ones here, so it's kind of nice to lean on those. I'm going to do the average duration, and then also commonly used, I'm going to do pages per session, and then I'm also going to do the bounce rate. You could drill it down further if you want. Obviously, there's a ton of metrics out there that you can check. So you do need a destination page is what I am going to track. There are many ways that you can set these up. You can add further dimensions that seem to be nested here, but we're just going to set up a, an easy, simple filter to do this. Next, we need to add the filter here so we can actually like hone in on exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna include the destination page that matches exactly um, a specific URL. So I actually went and uh, wrote down the URL earlier. Let me pull that for you. So let's say we're just gonna track one. Let's keep it simple. We're just gonna do one right now and see what it looks like. That way you'll be able to take this and do whatever you need to do with it. So um, we're just gonna accept it like this. We're gonna save it. It's gonna show us some stuff, probably over the last week. And oh, we see it's comparing this week to last week for this specific page. So that's cool. It's giving us some information, very interesting. And the numbers here don't matter much, but hey, isn't it cool to see the page views go up? That's nice. We're just looking at one URL right here, one URL slug. Let's say we want to check a couple others in the case of like adding a bunch of new posts and we want to like track more of them. All right, so let's edit. You just click edit and then you can go back and make some changes. All right, so cool. If we um, are looking at the exact match, we end up with, you know, this right here. But what if instead we want to like check all in this specific case, I've actually created a um, like a silo for this piece of content. So let's say I want to get everything in that silo. I'll sh don't worry, I'll show you how to do individual uh, URLs in a second. But um, in the case that we you want to check the silo, you could just change this to uh, regex, which is regular expression, and then you don't have to change anything else. This is cool. Check this out. Click save. It will then show us our report here. And now you'll see it's everything under this whole entire like structure. So this is like the parent page right here. So any of the child pages, the children, and if it's plural, um, are gonna show up here. So you'll notice that some of these are newly created URLs. If you wanna get behind the scenes, um, you actually can go check out how I'm restructuring things. I'll share this information sometime in the future. Okay, so that is how you would do it for a silo structure, but not everyone has that, and it just happens to be something that I'm interested in checking, which is why it was like at my fingertips. But let's put in different URLs. I'll show you how to do that really quickly. So in this case, um, 
let's say we're going to look at this URL right here and then these uh, this other one right here. So we want to look at like more specific URLs and this is how these this is in a silo structure but don't worry it could be anything else um, here you wouldn't have to you know it wouldn't have to be part of the same silo. In fact just to like drive that point home a little bit more. I'm just gonna put in like a slash hire dash me. I happen to know that that is another URL that I have. So what you need to do if you're going to put in multiple URLs like this, you make a list of your URLs. I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. And then you're going to type in, it's called a pipe. It is a vertical line right there. It happens to be over the backslash on your keyboard. So if you hit shift and then backslash on my Apple keyboard here, that is the button in between the delete and the return button. So it's over on the right side. Um, you, you would reach with your pinky, all right? You reach with your pinky there. So you hit the pipe sign and it does need to be all on the same line. So, I'm gonna do another pipe sign. Basically, that means or. That is or, all right? So if you're new to programming or anything like that, congratulations. If you put the pipe sign, generally that means or in a lot of uh, languages and stuff. So at this point, I'm going to select all of this whole thing right here. I'm gonna copy it. I was gonna hit the uh, keyboard shortcut, but I'll show you here. Just copy it. Let's go back over to our analytics. And then we're going to include the destination page. We're going to keep the uh, re regex, regular expression. And then we're going to go ahead and paste in all of this business right here. You'll notice the little pipe sign. Again, that means or. This field is small, so that's why I'm working on a little scratch pad over there. Hit save and then hopefully, fingers crossed, it's just going to show us these three URLs right here. What you can do is, um, you know, you can compare one week to another week. Or what I like to do also is like, you know, don't do the comparison. But a lot of times, like if you just put in the previous couple months along with what you just updated, you'll often see a change. This is skewed and a little bit unusual the way it's um, like shooting up like that. But hey, that's what you want to see. So that is how you do it. Um, you can, if you end up with something weird and there's uh, some pages that show up that you don't intend to show up, sometimes those are like preview pages or some kind of weird stuff. Um, you can add a fil filter where you would put in your destination page again, you would exclude it and then you can exclude the exact URL that you're getting in there is noise. Again, this is a really sloppy way to do it. I'm no expert. This is just how I sort of pieced it together. So I just started creating these sort of reports for a specific case study. It's called the age site case study. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, please uh, check out the other videos. It's all about age site case study. So you can learn why I got into this sort of uh, reporting and custom reports and all that stuff. Again, Doug Cunnington here from Niche Site Project. And take a look at some of the other videos if you're interested. And uh, subscribe if you like what you see. Thanks.